All right, we just got a new release of the X Air iPad app today. It is 1.4.02, and it fixes almost every issue we've all talked about for the last month with getting uh, all the features uh, in the iPad app. Now, the, the main thing, of course, is your effects, and we now have access to all of the effects that the X32 and the X Air has in its hardware. And again, this is all new for the iPad. And I like the way it's presented versus a pull-down menu. It's pretty cool. Just realize, of course, you do have the uh, stereo versions and dual versions. I've got the stereo combinator in my slot four here. It works just perfect, and I've compared that with all of the readouts and the data on the Mac app. And I've had that open side by side and have already checked that. Uh, the interface is slightly different. You can see that I have to hit the up and down arrow here to change my bands. That works just fine. There is a layout difference over here, which works just fine as well. Uh, everything else is the same. And uh, instead of just tapping on the meters, you can go through and hit these arrows to go through the different meter options. And I'm always going to be looking for the gain reduction. Okay, so that's my default. So all the effects are there. They all work just like you would expect. Uh, one thing that's a little different on the icon is this icon up here is the insert icon, and that is now taken out. And now that's inserted again, and that mirrors the big insert mode button on the uh, Mac app. So that's an off and on insert button here. If that is not lit like over here on the delay, it is not inserted and it's an aux effect. All right, so that's one item. And let's go back here to my microphone. And one of the biggest things, of course, EQ. And we now have a graphical touch interface for our four band. So we can select a band. We can come up here and select what type of EQ it is. Parametric, and we can push and pull this. And then, of course, we can also pinch with two fingers for the cue. We can pull up the high shelf, and you can certainly hear that. There is one issue that uh, I'm surprised that the high-pass filter is not on here. Uh, so remember, all of your inputs have a four-band parametric and a high-pass filter. That filter, for now, is still over here, but it's not graphical, so we don't see that. You know, For example... I may have the high pass set very, very high. Come over here and I'm confused why, you know, why do I have no lows? And I keep coming over here and boosting lows and I'm not getting it. Surely, just like all the other apps, they'll they'll get that fixed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that high pass back off. All right. So I think we should definitely have the high pass filter over here. It is on the Mac app as a part of the graphical EQ interface. So you can actually access it there as well as the input tab. So the next big thing is routing. Uh, that was not here at all. So uh, it's a very different interface. I'm surprised that they're making up designs every time they, they do this when they already have a really good design in the Mac app. I'm surprised it doesn't look almost like that. But maybe there are some design reasons or space reasons they didn't share the exact same grid look and layout of the Mac app. Inputs are pretty simple. It's almost always going to be one-to-one. USB returns, same thing, almost almost always a one-to-one. -one. And where it gets tricky, of course, are your USB outputs and P16 outputs when you can select where you tap those outputs. Now, if you've seen the Mac and PC app, we've got color-coded tabs in here that allow us to select what the tap point is going to be. Here, all we're doing is making a connection, and we have to come over here to the far right menu to select whether it's going to be post fader or pre EQ and all the things that we're used to seeing in those color coded options on the Mac and PC. So, again, I'm surprised it looks like this. I would have thought that if we make a connection, we could hold it down, a contextual menu would pull up or pop up, and we could select one of the color coded options that we see in the other apps. It obviously is good that it's here, it works. I'm just surprised they spend the time and resources redesigning the interface for every app. All right, so that's just a quick overview of routing. 
There are a few things that still aren't here, uh, and that's in the setup menu. This setup menu does not quite mirror the Mac app, especially the mixer tab, where you can select your USB interface as a 2x2 or an 18x18. I'm not seeing that. Not necessarily a big deal, but I'm constantly switching from 2x2 two two to 18x18 18 18, depending on what I'm using the interface for. So that does not appear to be here yet. And the last thing I'm, I'm noticing is I wish there was a little more consistency in the way that we create shows and snapshots or scenes. It is obviously quite different on the Mac app by using icons that are up over here in the upper right-hand area where it says X Air. You know, on the PC apps, we've got the floppy disk, the folder, and of course the copy and paste buttons. And on this app, we've got shows and snapshots. Hopefully there's more consistency. I'm sure Behringer realizes that everyone that uses an XAir product is going to be using multiple devices constantly. And personally, I'm using an iPad, a MacBook, an iMac, and an Android. So it's a bit daunting out in the field and at work and in the office going back and forth between all these apps having to really think about where a function is on this particular app because it's different than the other two or three versions of the app. So uh, this is a, an amazing update. We're all glad that we have it. And uh, we're definitely excited to see the new updates as they come and hopefully more consistency as they have a little more time under their belt developing these apps and making them more similar. All right, that's just a quick overview. If you have any questions, let us know on our YouTube channel or check out our Facebook user group, Behringer X Air.